All right, so this black rhino habitat was supposed to be a quick and easy one and then it took three weeks. Great. Anyways, I also made a park and a toilet building because why not? Let the chaos begin. All right, so the entire idea for the black rhino habitat was let's build something big that's also completely forgettable. Not saying that this build is not cool or amazing. It's just it's supposed to be unassuming next to the sand cat shack. Because even though I'm really proud of the sand cat shack, when you just look at the basic shape, it's a cone. So if I build like something really big and breathtaking next to it, even if I just added a tower next to it, the sand cat shack would very quickly just be overshadowed by whatever is next to it. That's also why I for a long time was really just like, do I want this elevator right next to the sand cat shack? Because the elevator is a tower if you just look at the basic shape of it and it might take over from the sand cat shack like if you look at the basic shape of the sand cat shack it's just a cone with a bite taken out of it and now next to it i built a donut that's been melted and yes that was on my mind the entire time that i was building it just donuts yeah, it's just it's a round shape where like some of the edges just flow into the ground even though I really don't like donuts. For me, donuts are just kind of boring. Like if you offer me anything besides a donut, I will probably take that because uh, I just don't like donuts. Well, it's not that I don't like them. Again, as I said, they are to me very boring. Like no matter what glaze you put on it, it's just, it's a donut. It's sweet and yeah, that's mostly it. Anyways, so... I'm basically using the same technique everywhere in this build with like the rounded shape and I have had it frequently of like hey people or people asking me like why do you use the mud columns how do you get the rounded shapes and it's just like yeah it's the mud columns that you build the shape of the dome that you want or the round shape that you want. I might want to make that into a short, just like quickly explaining it because it's like, it's a five second, well, not five seconds. <laughs> it's a very quick thing to explain of like, oh yeah, the mud columns, they are used for to center something on the grid and then you can take it out and make the shape of a dome or whatever round shape and, it cop and you can copy it completely 180 degrees, I think. <laughs> math and like geometry and such is something that i very quickly forgot because we all have calculators by this point like your phone is a giant calculator so it's just like yeah you, uh, i don't need to know this i can just put it in my phone even though it's sometimes very easy to just like quickly do it in, in your head but uh, modern technology is great <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to when it came to the actual build of the interior of the Black Rhino habitat. Yeah, I just thought, let's separate these guys because even though I want a pet rhino, I have fully convinced myself that somehow I will be able to pet or tame a rhino, even though I think they are more aggressive than an elephant. I realized, yeah, we don't want those, like... There's two rhinos in this habitat. You don't want to get those close to each other because they're solitary animals. And I think I read somewhere that most of the wounds on a rhino are inflicted by an other rhino. So it's just like, yeah, let's keep these two separate. Even though they're like, I think at best two female rhinos can get close to each other. With close, I mean spatially close without attacking each other. But uh, yeah, they... For me, I like rhinos a lot more than elephants. Even though I think rhinos are the more aggressive ones, or at least the more territorial ones, especially when there's a calf involved. I, for some reason, just, I like rhinos. And it's not all because I envision myself riding into battle on the back of an armored rhino. I also just, I have give, or I get, that was a very grammatically correct sentence. I give, get, whatever. But riders just give me that like, I don't know, that like gentle giant vibe. Even though like elephants are usually more 
described as like, oh, the gentle giant. I'm just like, nah. For me, elephants are just meh. Just like giant pandas, they're just meh. I r like rhinos a lot more. And I just want to like pet them. Again, I'm fully convinced that I can tame a black rhino. Well, just actually any rhino. I don't need a black rhino, I just need a rhino. Do I blame Narnia for this? Yes, because I think there's rhinos there, but I don't think anyone rides them actually. But uh, yeah, I fully blame Narnia for me wanting to tame every animal that could potentially kill me. Lions, big cats, bears, teddy bears, minotaurs, sure. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on. So. I did actually go a little bit more realistic, not completely realistic because I don't have the brain power for that, but I went a little bit more realistic at taking like, oh yeah, these animals can be quite aggressive, can be quite territorial. You don't really want the keepers close to them unless they're like completely zonked out. Like if they need to like go to the vets or I, I there's a, probably a word for like what you would call a vet in a zoo but again not the brain power for it today but i just built a completely separate section so that like if they get fat if the rhinos get fat or anything the uh, zookeepers are just completely separated with thick steel beams so that like yeah we don't want our zookeepers to be gored by a rhino horn now I'm just thinking of like, there's an animation somewhere of like a unicorn goring. I don't know if that's the right word, but just having like a human on its horn. Dead. But uh, for some reason, that animation just stuck in my head. And it's like something I probably like see saw 10 years ago. But sometimes stupid stuff just gets stuck in your head. And it's just like, why the hell do I remember that? But I don't remember this very important thing that I need in daily life. Why do I remember the animation of a unicorn spearing some kind of person on its horn and it's just like bleeding out on the horn? Like, why do I remember that from like an animation I saw 10 years ago? But I don't remember things I need in daily life. Yeah, I don't know how my brain works. Also, I just quickly want to mention that uh, is this build realistic? Probably not, because there will be someone who's going to just like try and use this building as a slide. Yes, I also build like a sort of... I would not call it like a security place, but just like a staff place, even though it's fake, because I couldn't actually place a building there. Like it's at the end of this video, I will build like a toilet building and it's there's a fake staff place next to it and i think that that's just like there's security cameras somewhere here and like everyone who tries to use this building as a slide just immediately gets banned from the zoo just like immediately it's just like they matrix appear next to you as soon as you even think of using this building as a slide and then you just get kicked out of the zoo i just also really like the idea of like some guests just completely like cartoonish being kicked out of the zoo. I think everybody knows what I mean with cartoonishly kicked out of the zoo. They just like yeet you. Anyways, now we're going to the actual habitat of the rhinos. And somebody actually on Twitter asked me like, hey, how do you make these like canals separating like the guests from the animals? And it's the same principle as how I make domes, how I make any rounded building. It's just use the mud brick pillar to center something on it, like completely on the center of the grid, and then just take it out so that you can make a nice round building. Whenever I see somebody not use this technique, it's just like, it's so easy. Like I just get annoyed in a way. Like it's not a serious thing. It's just like a jokey kind of way of being annoyed. But it's just like, this is such an easy way. Also, yes, I will constantly use like the 15 degree turn on the pots just because it makes this technique even easier. <laughs> because it's just completely just like, let the 
PC, let the computer do all of the math for me. I just want to make things look pretty. So yeah, it's organic shapes in the end and a lot of like design is with like math of like, oh yeah, we need this degree of turning or something like that. So uh, yeah, but again, like I might want to make a short just to explain this technique. I also, I don't know why I never done this before, but I used the blue columns because the path is like on that snapping from for 15 degrees with each turn and so i could very easily just be like oh yeah i put one blue pole here one blue pole on the complete other side or the mirrored side or like on the other side of the pot and then turn that like until i get a sort of rounded shape so that i can completely align it to the pot because every time i turn the pot i use the 15 degrees so this circle works perfectly I don't know if I'm explaining this correctly, but that's also not really the point of my videos. My vi videos are just meant to be chaos and entertaining. Like recently somebody pointed out like, hey, it would be better if you like talk about like how you're building or why you're building this. What was the inspiration for it? And like their criticism is completely valid. Like if you want to see something like do tell. I did kind of zone out immediately when they said like, oh, I had to follow the rest of the video on mute because self-pitying and such, which is just my kind of humor. Like, I can sit here going like, I'm amazing and such, but that's not funny to me. <laughs> I like calling myself trash, an idiot, a dumbass and such, because if you think on any point they're like oh poison doesn't have a lot of self-confidence uh bitch it's probably the other way around i have too much self-confidence so i need to take myself a peg down like uh i need to get, keep myself grounded because even though i started the channel with like little to no self-confidence over time it has just grew and now it's just a beast that i need to tame every day because uh yeah i'm a <laughs> I have too much confidence sometimes. Anyway, so uh, yeah, I am also just not good at explaining things. Like I've said this frequently that like if I try and explain something, usually I will leave people more confused than before because yeah, this is why I never went to become a teacher. Also because kids scare me. Like kids are too honest and I can't deal with that. Also, they're just like, you leave your, like, you look away from a kid for five seconds and it's somehow up in a tree. And it has like five utensils up its nose, probably. Yeah, kids scare me. Anyway, so uh, yeah, again, if any time I say like, oh, I'm trash or I'm a dumbass, it's just a joke. And also, if you want me to explain things and such, that's probably not going to happen because i like rambling i like having completely nonsensical videos because the main point of my videos is like oh yeah i like to entertain people like if i try to keep myself focused on the video or what i'm building i will very quickly get bored and my brain will just spawn weird topics for me to talk about that's just how it naturally goes and again like this comment that or yeah, the comment that that person made is completely valid. Like, if they want to see something like that, that's great. I will sadly not be able to provide that, but there's plenty of other Planet Zoo creators who can, who are just as amazing with building as I am. And felt a little bit weird to call myself amazing with building, but it's like, for me, the building is one of my strengths that I can admit. And I am getting better with terrain work and such, because... I'm a religious fanatic for Caesar Creates when it comes to building, <laughs> terrain work and such, and so many other creators. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> I'm i part of the cult for Caesar Creates when it comes to landscaping. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, their comment, completely valid. If you feel like this, good. But sadly, I won't be able to provide you that because I am a raging dumbass who loves to ramble and talk about crazy stuff like how I want to tame a rhino. What was I talking about again? Being a raging dumbass. 
that's what I was talking about. But also, when it comes to the terrain work, actually, to pick up from there, this is one of the things that I picked up. I don't think it was from Caesar Create, but it was from some other video that I watched when it came to terrain work. As such, was like, I used the same thing with the elephants, but like having the canal and just putting the water in was just a lazy thing for me because I was like, yeah, I don't want to do the rock work, so I'm just going to put water in there. I don't know. For some reason, the rock work in the canals or in the like li little separation from the actual habitat and the guests. For some reason, my brain is just like, no. Like, I want to do the actual habitat, not this canal that nobody's going to look at. But uh, yeah, it makes sense to have that canal. Because, again, rhinos are very territorial. Same thing can go for elephants. Like, you don't want to get close to them especially as a guest like maybe as a zookeeper you have like learned or trained to like not engage them and get out of the habitat safely if they show any sign of being ter territorial you don't want the guests to get too close to the rhino because those things are strong like if those things go r rampaging like i don't think a fence is going to hold them back so you need to have like the separation of like a canal or something like that also you know that there's going to be one dumbass that's going to climb the railing, going to climb the fence, getting into the habitat. And now I did say, oh, I'm a dumbass, but I'm a somewhat smart dumbass who knows not to get into animal enclosures because at the end of the day, it's still a wild animal. Even if it's in a zoo, it's not like fully tame it's just like it's comfortable with people surrounding it and such like it doesn't probably won't immediately become aggressive or as quickly as a fully wild animal but yeah you don't want guests anywhere near it or at least you wanted them near it but from a safe distance anyways so that's basically it for like the canal thing again as i said i used the same technique for building the canals as i used for the main building because i used the same technique for every rounded structure so again i should probably make a short of it just to explain it i did make a video of it but i don't know why i made that video like 10 minutes i think like it's Something that I probably can explain in like a minute at most. Which is basically this the time limit for a short. So yeah. Also, when it came to the trees, this is why I really love building for carnivores because they don't eat any of the plants. But any of the trees or plants in the rhino habitat, yes, realistically would be eaten by the rhinos any of the trees i actually made sure to place them in the rocks because i don't know if this is from a rhino but i do have like the memory of seeing maybe a rhino but it could also be another animal the idea or memory of seeing the visual of a rhino scraping its horn against a tree which is probably long term not good for a tree if they do that like daily so i did make a note of like yeah every tree needs to be in between the rocks so that the rhino can't get to it otherwise there would need to be like some kind of guard surrounding the tree but i didn't really like that visual of like just having guards around every tree in this habitat but yeah there's probably a too many plants in this habitat the rhino would have eaten them all probably or most of them and b there would probably be like guards surrounding the tree but uh, if you just place a lot of rocks around it, it gives the same idea, I hope. So, yeah. If you want to look at my videos or like my builds and think like, oh yeah, this is completely realistic. It's not. Is there still a lot of just like, oh yeah, this is supposed to look pretty. I actually have been thinking of like, oh yeah, should I close some of the shops and such in the zoo? Because there's never a day where everything is open there's always something out of surface or something that's closed like there's always like oh there's this toilet building 
but it's being cleaned so you can't get into it or there's this shop that's closed because of air renovations or just closed because of time of day or something like if you want full realism like that's just the reason to be in an idea of my obvious like yeah not everything is going to be open so in a way i'm still building like a perfect zoo where everything is open which i'm completely fine with because i don't go for 100 percent realism maybe give that a thought when you're building and want complete realism it's just like yeah close something down make something renovated have a completely empty habitat because an new animal is going to be introduced or uh, animals are being moved around because that also happens so it's just been an idea that's floated in my head and i actually wanted to close down the toilet building that i'm building today just because of that idea also because the toilet building wasn't complete and not a nightmare even though it's simply a toilet building anyways now we are building the little park right next to the rhino habitat which was supposed to be a plaza like or a square like just an open space maybe with some tables and search for the sand cat shack but then i looked at the complete area of where we are at right now in naturalis and then i realized there's a lot of asphalt here there's a lot of just like faults and such i need something where the this might sound weird but where the earth can kind of breathe where there's just a lot more natural stuff where there's open ground and such then that plaza that i had in mind because Again, I wanted this to enhance the sand can check and not take away from it. But now it was just like, yeah, I need space for the ground to breathe. Kind of a strange way of saying it, but I just wanted some open natural area. And so I built a little park, which we will continue after. Oh, God, the toilet building. Now, here's the thing. This is still part of like the elevated walkway that we started with the sand cat shack. It actually goes over the top of the roof of what I'm just going to affectionately call the donuts. The half-eaten melted donuts. But um, there was just this empty space beneath the pot. Which, yeah, you're not going to be able to place real like big trees there. Because there's not going to be enough sun. Well that and if the trees actually did grow then you would constantly need to cut them down because they are going to just completely envelop the pot so then i thought oh yeah let's make this space underneath the pot useful kind of like the idea with like the old time like elevated railways in a city where they have like buildings underneath it like it's not really like actual public buildings it would probably be like you know basically things that don't really need windows as much because you only have like two areas where you can build windows but just look at like well look at the first idea that came to my mind was like oh yeah the elevated railways in new york but i think those are on like steel beams and like underneath it is completely open in rotterdam they have an elevated railway underneath which are actual buildings or like the buildings are part of the elevation i don't really know how to describe it but like, yeah, I wanted to make the area underneath the pot useful. Also, yes, there's uh, elevated railways in, at least in Rotterdam, I don't think they are being used anymore. So that's why you can actually use that space underneath the building or underneath the railway more intensely because you don't have the constant earthquake whenever a rail or a train passes, which I just imagine would be kind of interesting. Like every time a, a train passes, they all the building starts shaking trucks can cause that much like noise and just like can make buildings just shake trains probably can as well more likely even anyways i don't know where i was going with this but uh, yeah wanted to use the area underneath the pathway just to make it again useful but i also had the idea of like oh yeah i want gates so that when naturalis closes they can like slowly push the guests to the front because you will always have stragglers you will always have people who just either walk more slowly or don't want to leave because you have those people as well sadly and you kind of want to slowly push them to the front by closing off areas and i thought like oh yeah this is a perfect way place to put one of those gates because it's like it has 
the walls of the Rhino habitat on one side, then it has its toilet building on the other. And um, yeah, it didn't really work out well because it just either it would just completely close off the toilets from like the rest. So then it would be kind of, I don't know, it just seems sad to me that like the first thing that you can't get to, especially if you're like, if you the zoo closes, you're still at the sand cat, then the toilet buildings get closed off. <laughs> so, so you just have to like run and like book it to the entrance if you need to piss. But um, yeah, in the end, I did decided like, yeah, let's not put the gates in here. Let's put them somewhere more closely to the front so that like this entire area closes. So that when like the African area closes, it's not just like, oh yeah, the sand cat is still open. No, the entire area. Anyway, for some reason, I also had the idea of, because now we're back at the park to have an elevated walkway here. It just to break it up a bit and such. It's not usable because it's too tidy. And also when, if I would put an actual pathway in here, I would have to deal with like the thickness of the path because there's always this concrete foundation underneath the actual parts so it's not a functional walkway but it just looked pretty also as i mentioned before when it came to the toilet building and such i did originally want to put like a staff building next to it because i constantly forget staff buildings so every time the staff needs something they need to go back to the actual like staff area in front of the zoo because there's no vet air, vet or veterinarian building anywhere else in the zoo. There's no staff like rest building for them anywhere else in the zoo. So uh, wanted to do that, couldn't because this is still like the rhino habitat, sand cat habitat, the elephant habitat. It's all kind of on this elevation, and that area where I wanted to build the staff building right next to the toy building was just like on the area where that elevation drops and also the parting would just not work so i just put a fake staff building there just like put some doors with staff only on there and then just called it a day it's like yeah this is not useful but it gives the idea that there's a staff building there so if any moron tries to use the donut as a slide they will get caught they will probably pay a fine because you will probably in some way damage the reeds or attached roof and will just be banned in indefinitely so yeah don't use this building as a slide just look at it and be amazed also don't just look at the like button just hit that thing also maybe the subscribe button if you want to see more of this dumbass who's probably never really going to talk fully on how and why i do my buildings anyways have a wonderful day guys bye bye